<sighs> the week of disappointment continues. Mm-hmm. This feels like a real wasted week. Yeah. You okay with it? Yeah, it's fine. I mean, I guess it's bound to happen. And it did. Oh, uh, my name is Jason. My name is Julian. And we, we do in filmographies. filmographies. That's right. This week. Yeah, we're doing a Dawson's thing. Creek. Yep. Double Dawson's. Double Dawson or Raw Dawson. I used to love Dawson's Creek, Julian. I watched the entire show. Did you really? I did. I think I tapped out in the last like two seasons. I think I was greatly disappointed because I watched 90210. The original. So I am familiar with the show, although it had been now, what, 20 years since I watched it? And it's funny because Callie watched this with me as well, both episodes, and Without context, and some of the things I, I just absolutely do not remember. You know, it, it's a weird show. It's bad. Especially because these two episodes take place season apart. So you, you're like dropped into the ocean and you're just like, what is what is this? And then the next season you're just like, wow, things have changed so much. Uh, season one had to have been much better than this, right? Because mm-hmm. I, 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 it was like a show I made sure I saw every week when at least that first season, like... Mm-hmm every tuesday it was cw i think it was wb at that wb right god you know because it does that thing where it just establishes money's not a problem in this universe oh sure yeah yeah yeah. all of the issues they're going to have are going to be relationship based Pacey's poor. Is he? I thought he was rich. No, I think Pacey is uh, a poor kid. Maybe Katie Holmes is too. I thought he was left with money but no parents. Mm. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. How does he have a boat? I thought he worked really hard to get that boat. Okay, maybe. That's probably accurate and better. I wish I could remember what that teacher he fucked looked like. Oh, God, yeah. I remember at the time being like, oh, fuck. I thought there were going to be two fuck moments in these episodes and they weren't there. This is, uh, I, it, it's so strange to have loved this show so much. It was appointment television. Mm-hmm. I was wildly invested in it. It's, at one point, I loved Katie Holmes. I thought she was just great, which is quite bizarre to me to think. But also, I had moved from a small town to Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So I think that Dawson's Creek was kind of my anchor to what I wanted my life to have been in that small sure. town had I continued there. Also, Dawson lives on a lake? That's so crazy. Is it a lake? I mean, it's or Dawson's it Creek. creek? Well, isn't a creek like a little like riverbed, like it's flowing? But this looks like a lake that he lives on. It looks like a marsh. I'll give you that. And yeah, I don't know if they ever really emphasize where the creek is, if there even is a creek. He's got that dock. That's true. For boats. Does Pacey come visit him on his boat? He, boy, I think he grew into being a reasonably handsome man. Vanderbeek? Yeah. I, I don't think he's handsome in this at all. No, man. Looking back on this, I'm like, really? He's got a really big top of his head yeah he's he's the balding middle of already. his head is narrow and then it may have just been the framing but i felt like his chin was more to like the right so when you see him at an angle from the left you're like where is his why is his chin pointing there yeah i, don't, I mean i'm not trying to disparage the guy obviously he's wildly successful yeah no he seems like he's actually <coughs> pretty awesome like, he seems like a really nice yeah. guy especially when he kind of became a little bit more self-referential which was i think the thing at the time that a lot of people were doing. Uh, he played himself. I'm thinking, don't trust the B in apartment 23. I'm Lennon and McCartney, bitch. Yeah, you are. You are a king, James. <gasps> king James. Like the Bible. Well, and Doogie. What about and Harold and Cooper? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Because well, I mean, he was a shittier version of himself in Jay and Silent Bob. Vanderbeek. Him and Jason Biggs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, wait a second. Aren't you that guy that fucked the pie? You see, man? You see? You put your dick in a pie. Enough! It's interesting seeing Michelle Williams as a child. Yeah. Practically. I did not really like her on this show. No, 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 no. Well, God, she's only in the opening of the first one. You know what? Let's just go into the synopses. Can, can we briefly talk about how Jen's whole character when the show started was that she was a loose whore? That everybody... She had was had... She? She had had sex okay. and done some drugs, and everybody treats her like she's the Scarlet Letter lady. Because like, initially, her and Jack were really close, right? Is that Keir Smith? Yeah, Keir Smith. Oh, yeah. Where the fuck is Meredith Monroe in this? I liked her a lot, too. I thought she was so cute. That's Jack's sister. Me? Like Pacey? No way. Well, 
Maybe. Oh, I don't even remember her. No, I think Pacey was into her for a little bit or somebody. Because Jack is only briefly in the other episode. He's not in this one at all. Yeah, he's, he, he's in the Best Buy in the, in the second one. And throughout the party and everything, yeah. <laughs> so this one, this is episode... 12 of season five uh, here, I'm gonna bring it up. it's called text lies and videotape what do you mean did you masturbate which is uh quite dreadful this is, this is the sisterhood of the traveling pants <laughs> dawson's creek text lies and videotape dawson leary james vanderbeek is freaking out because his father died and failed to update his will to include dawson's newly born infant daughter as if that shit even matters while also dunking on the efficacy of therapy. Meanwhile, Joey Potter, Katie Holmes, is trying to solve the mystery of some ideas written by an author to an unknown recipient for her class with Professor Ken Marino. Erstwhile Pacey Witter, Joshua Jackson, is still grappling with his baffling white-ass first name while simultaneously attempting to help a co-worker get over her fling with their married boss. Elsewhere, Jen Lindley, Michelle Williams, sips coffee in the beginning. Jack McPhee, Care Smith, is nowhere to be seen now dawson doesn't have a baby right that no that was supposed to be his sister the dad's daughter okay i thought so so that's the crux of his arc he is upset that his dead father didn't update his will to include his newborn sister dawson's sister is it an affair baby no i don't think so just his old ass mom? i think it was just yeah they were old and they got oops pregnant and he died for real right the guy that played dawson's I think so. dad he had a heart attack i thought he was killed gangland style I don't know, honestly. I keep getting the feeling that this is the guy from The Flash. It's not, though. He's still alive. Yeah. But Shipley? He, I feel like he looks like him or William Peterson from CSI. CSI, of course. But it's neither of those guys. No, it is not. And so he's just tripping his mind off. Like, how? What? this must be a mistake. It's like, what's the problem? It's a baby, right? If you guys inherit everything, the baby's going to get it. Like, what, what are we doing here? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. It's some sort of a weird projection of his grief to try to fixate on something that he feels like he could somehow fix or must be a mistake. But so he left USC. He's not going back. He wants to be a, the next Steven Spielberg, which they say quite a lot on that show. Oh, my God. It, it, it was. It was The Flash. Oh, was it? He's he, not dead, though. No. Because he? he's on The Flash. No, yeah, he's fine. He's killed in a car accident on the show. I thought he really died. Weird. He's probably like, I'm out of here. I ain't no creaks around here. Oh, he didn't want to be on the show anymore. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, the show sucks. I'm out of here. He probably signed on thinking, ah, I'll do one or two, and then like five seasons later. Yeah, I don't want to do this shit. I don't want to do this Are we bringing shit. back The Flash? <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag flashback. Oh, that was good. <laughs> and so, so he's also going to therapy with a woman who seems his age, even though Dawson's only supposed to be 18. Yeah, that's the lady from... Yeah. Oh, you know? She's always gothed out. She was Alice Wisdom in Almost Famous. I don't remember that character. Me either. <laughs> She's one of the groupies, I assume. Is Pauline something, right? Yeah, is she's it, on like CSI, NCIS. Her entire thing has been goth. Like, that's her look. Yeah. This is why. She looks real stupid she's at this. awful. Yeah. What is the like, hair going on in this show? It's like Rachel Harris. Everybody's hair is bad. The week that girl died. This lady's like, yeah, it's blonde I hair. Want, like looks. icy, spiky hair. I want the guy Fieri. Fieri. I'm on Jag now. <laughs> I'm jagged up. Is she Jag? No, I think just NCIS and... CSI. Isn't NCIS a Jag spinoff? Oh, I don't know, but it's not called Jag. Well, so. she's a Jagger now. <laughs> she's a Jagged. And uh, yeah, man, it, he, he didn't want to go to the th Don't you think it's weird to like talk to yourself, or talk about yourself to like a stranger? And Jen's like, no, it helps. Are we still doing that? Are people, people are 20 years ago, we're still like, uh, I think, I think therapy might be for kooks. Of all people, you think Dawson's honky ass would be like raised on therapy yeah he's like the most in touch with his feelings lothario wannabe he's crying and creating narratives based on his life constantly he's proto emo I've been wishing I had one desire. you're already doing therapy with yourself yeah have you not seen your show oh your movies just put on some dashboard and confessional and, and mm -hmm. cut, cut your wrists yeah <laughs> I thought you guys say cut your losses, but that's even better. So he goes to the therapy, and it feels like she's 
<laughs> like you're walking up broken glass? On the verge of hitting on him. Yeah, and he'd probably be like, ugh. Because later on- And then she'd be like, no, I think I say, ugh. Later on when he's there for his second therapy session, it feels like eight o'clock. The lights are off. There's mood lighting. It's dark as fuck outside. He's got some candles lit. Yeah, it's like, hey, buddy. Do you like Enya? <laughs> what do you think about vanilla bean? And, and, and so he's crying it out. He's realizing things. Yeah. About- life and boy joey is doing a project for ken marino's class so i take it you've been finding our little rose lazar project somewhat snooze inducing i don't know who the hell the author is supposed to be i don't think they ever say do they say hey mm, who knows they have like effectively like the cheever letters dad you and john cheever yes yes he was the most wonderful person i've ever known and i loved him deeply in a way you could never understand he's written some letters to someone and they don't know who it's to because they're different from other letters she's written and so this class of five people are trying to figure out who she wrote the letters to none of these other students were ever in anything that i recognize them from absolutely they're all kind of dumb looking too yeah really dumb especially the one that actually talks and i'm like what is this is this a club or is this a course why are there only five people and they're meeting in ken marino's house which is the worst set designed house i've seen in a very long time i turn to callie i go this is like around that psych shit you watched she watches psych usa characters welcome i'm like you see how all the women have really terrible pantsuits and everybody's hair is layered and feathered oh boy this is that time they're doing it on here so busy phillips lives with isn't it bijou is it bijou Oh, is it busy? I think it's busy. Is Bijou the one from Almost Famous that was yeah. molesting or harassing? <laughs> okay, yeah. yes. Busy. Big Mouth Busy. Who I like, but I don't really like her in this. No. The they show. were trying to make her motor mouth and irreverent, quirky, sassy, and it just was like insufferable. But she's trying to be on the real world the Ibiza, right? Ibiza? And, uh, Ibiza? Ibiza. And she, I guess, it's not really much of a plot <laughs> you know and but but i get the impression that she thinks that katie holmes has either confessed expressed or has been shy about wanting to be with ken marino okay but maybe that was my imagination ken then, marino is fucking hot in this he looks very good he looks so good is this like five years after the state baby seven here's the thing though it's hard to take him serious for me Oh, I didn't have that problem. I was I was thinking about like I'm I'm glad he looped back to comedy, mm-hmm. but I thought it was nice that he was like I'm gonna be an actor, kind of like an actor actor. Because I'm just so more used to seeing him, even when he's playing it straight, it's for comedic effect. That on here, I'm just like no, none of this is funny. It feels like it should be, and it's hard for me to like take him as like a reasonable adult. Oh, man, I'm sorry that that happened to you, because I was like, that was probably the best part of this episode, was looking at Ken Marino and being mm-hmm. like, oh, man, look at him, just just being a guy. So Dawson learns to realize that the will doesn't matter. Katie Holmes cracks, has a pretty plausible explanation as to who she thinks the letters are intended for, which is the author herself, like a journal, more than in letters. Pacey, oh, geez, there's a whole plot with Pacey. A girl he likes, who at first, for a split second, I thought was the girl from... Dingling List? Yes. The week that girl died. Because there was a name, the person who wrote this episode or directed it had a similar name to her character's name. Marita, I think. I was like, whoa, what's my brain doing here? <laughs> it's not her. And he, he seems to maybe like her. Yeah. But she's dating their boss, who's married. And he brings his, his wife inadvertently shows up to an event that she's not supposed to be at. Mm-hmm. And they dance. And are married and she's just like what is he doing that motherfucker dancing with his wife what and pacey's just like you know you should probably chill out i like pacey yep i, I always hate his name pacey. but i had never had a problem with his name boy he's really kind of a level-headed joe i will say that i think i assumed pacey was better looking hmm. he boy he's got a real chubby youthful face i felt like everybody looked like they were 40 and like work stupid office jobs interesting everybody in this uh, fucking dawson and pacey like both of them they just dawson feels like a, a frankenstein pretending to be a child pacey he i mean he had a lot of baby fat on him still a surprising amount or maybe it was beer fat i don't know it, yeah it looks like it's it's beer fat he's 40 he 
Katie Holmes has always looked like a child. Yeah, I man, her ah shucks faces that she does, it was crazy. Her eyes get really psychotic. Twists her mouth around. Oh god, there's a scene in the Best Buy where she's like trying to be happy, and it's just like, no, no, no. Did you did you find her attractive when you were younger? Mm-mm. Oh man, I think it's just because I. She reminded me of a girl that I liked that I had to leave behind when I moved. Mm. So it never was. Yeah, boy. So I transferred those feelings to Joey Potter. No, I didn't. I always thought she was a, a sad looking person. Like she looks sad, sad or, all the time. Yeah. Okay, not not like look at this unfortunate creature. No, no, no. I mean, she's a fine looking woman, you know, but she always had really sad eyes droopy sad eyes i think that's yeah okay those are just her eyes they are obviously her eyes but the characteristics of them she's got them round balls so eventually she is like yeah you're right i should probably shouldn't be with this guy but while pacey brings her food which i was struggling to discern what it was it kind of looked like shawarma but there were a couple of french fries but she licked her finger like there was sauce i don't know they never really showed it and it really was distracting didn't he say he brought like all the stuff from the party maybe like like a miniature version of it it was i was like oh man how exciting would it be if a guy just showed up at your house or a a person you feeling down a guy person right shows up with some fucking snacks i mean if a girl showed up to my house with like uh six varieties of takeout food Mm -hmm. i'd be like do you do you love me i love i think i love you Mm -hmm. jenny get out yeah jenny (laughs) jenny you never bring me food Mm -hmm. go now i love you don't want you to leave go now this is my wife now and but then she gets a voice message from the boss oh girl shit my life so complicated why is everything always gotta be be so complicated complicated. and Paisley's like i'm out you know you're dumb i'm a ghost and she just is left to stand and caress the answering machine eat that food he brought and that's the end of the episode oh we can talk about our friend Robert Longstreet. The entire the reason for this. So what do you give this episode? What about Robert? <laughs> I'm joking. It's a fine, dumb scene. He's good, but it's a melodramatic soap opera. He's a lawyer. He brings by the paperwork. He or does are they going over. Paperwork? He goes look. This last item is the living trust. As you know, the trust provides uh, money for health care, educational assistance, financial support. You and Dawson are the listed recipients, but not Lily. Sometimes, I mean, you know wills and it's not a big deal and mm, there's got to be another copy somewhere well i mean if you find it you let me know but i mean don't get so worked up like one of my friends he doesn't have a cock in fact i gave him mine yeah you know it's it, it's really it's dawson it's an infant how many how often do people change their wills sure a new baby is a life-altering thing but so is raising a baby oh you think he's gonna take a moment he's gonna break off a piece of that will cat bar he's gonna get back to it when she's a an adult and he isn't expecting to die unexpectedly yeah. you know chill the fuck out but he's, robert longstreet's clean shaven yeah he's wearing an ill-fitting suit he's he's he, you know what he, he's doing here he's reminding me that coffee is for closers no of oh. uh keith gordon oh in brooklyn bridge oh okay for sure i thought i was it was interesting i mean the guy's the character has a name he has multiple lines he's like he's he's the folk focus for like one minute yeah, they're out in their summer patio. Veranda? It's a veranda, but I was going to say three-season porch, but where they're at, this, it's probably never-ending season. Gazebo. I think it, it's supposed to set in North Carolina. Yeah. And uh, he's good. Yeah, he's good. Mm-hmm. I, I, it was interesting to see him just do a pop-on part like this, but I mean his... It kind of feels like Pee Wee Herman in the end of Pee Wee Herman, where he's the bellhop. You almost expect him to just kind of look at the camera and be like, oh, my Dawson's Creek. <laughs> It almost felt like Robert Longstreet should just be like, you believe this shit? I was a dig-a-ling less and I'm in Dawson's Creek. Eh? But he just eh. doesn't do that. No. I feel like Longstreet has more of the career that we would assume the actors would have. Absolutely. Because like... If fuck, I were an actor, this would probably be my career. Little little tiny bit parts being cut out of I'm other no Brad episodes. Pitt. I get right. that. You know. I mean, we did Billy Crudup. Billy Crudup came out swinging. Mm-hmm. We did Keith Gordon. Fucking super top heavy in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Great Different stuff. time. Rhonda Mitchell. I don't even know what to fucking say about Rhonda Mitchell. No, she's a slow climber. I think she just sort of becomes by default... Oh, uh, we got a movie and there needs to be a wife. Oh, uh, get Rhonda Mitchell. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, there's a movie and it, we need another wife. Uh, get Rhonda Mitchell. But nothing nope. that she's done that really, now that I think about it, has <laughs> really stood out. But Dawson's Creek sucks, right? It, it's some white bread pussy ass shit. It's terrible. I 
the dialogue is bad. Yeah. I remember when I was little, it's like, yeah, this, I like how these teenagers talk. Yeah. This is how I feel. I'm smart, too. It's, and then you hear it now, and you're just like, what the fuck? Everybody comes from a dysfunctional family. It's the 90s. The only happy families are in TV syndication. We've just become such a lessened society. Balance and order. Order and balance. But, you know, that just doesn't exist. Fuck like, all these people. Like, she even goes, she, or does she quote fucking Freud or niche in or some shit she's just like philosophical talking blah 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 it's like you're 18 doing that is insufferable doing that gets you thrown against the wall i want a show that is ken marino and robert longstreet yeah the professor and the lawyer oh they're roommates are they brothers roommate brothers yeah adopted by an orangutan raised in the wilds of africa no it's set in north carolina at that college <laughs> But there can be an orangutan. It'll be the Reddit orangutan with the juice box that opens oh. up the straw, licks the end of the straw, and stabs in the juice box and starts drinking with his expressive eyes. Yeah. That's that's their, their mommy daddy. Very nice. Yeah, Dawson's Creek is terrible. It's, you know, it was trash when I watched it as a young guy, but I was a young guy. So I was like, okay. Yeah. But as a an adult with uh, death looming on the horizon. It's like, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't got time for this shit. No! Well, okay, let's give our, our ratings. This episode, I'd give a three. Yeah. Robert Longstreet, i give a five. Really? Yeah. Okay. He's good, but there's just not much you can do with this. I will give the episode a four. Mm -hmm. I do not think that you could possibly jump into this show at <laughs> any random episode. It is straight confusing trash. Yeah. Longstreet, really, uh, uh, what did you give him? Five. Five? Mm -hmm. I'll give him a six. I like. I mean, I would almost give him a seven because I think he does that character well. He's doing the pop in. Sure. He. I buy him as a lawyer. There's nothing distracting about him. He's just like he's good and effective. Yeah. The problem with this show is uh, you can't be better than any of the other people in it. I think by default. So they're just like no, 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 less. No, 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 less. And then you're just left with line deliveries. Uh, Dawson cries some more. Mm -hmm. No, 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 more. Do that face. <laughs> yeah. So then the second episode, I did not look at what he was in these shows. And I texted Jules, he's best by employee. So I'm watching the show and I'm not really paying attention. But mind you, the other episode precedes this one. And he has a significant amount of dialogue, more dialogue almost than some of the other characters. Question, do you think maybe that Robert Longstreet's character, the lawyer, had a drug problem and got fired and disbarred. Mm -hmm. He could no longer be a lawyer. And now he's a Best Buy employee. Well, so again, not knowing what to expect. After seeing him in a significant role in the season prior as a lawyer, I'm just expecting him to be the lawyer again. Follow up thing. Sure. You know? And I'm, so I'm just kind of, I'm not, so I'm not in Brad Pitt mode. I'm not looking all around he's going to be presented to me i don't have to go anywhere he's going to come to me he's in a garage changing his oil if i watch it he will come yeah right so i'm just cutting loose you know i'm riffing on it me and callie are just fucking knocking a few back and uh the episode ends and it takes a little bit for my pea brain to <laughs> <laughs> tap me on the shoulder and go hey wait a second you, you weren't just watching this show i know <laughs> okay <laughs> You're not going on to the next episode, all right, Jack? This is a real problem that we face. Yeah. It happened to me with Divine Secrets, too. I watched it for like 45 minutes. You're like, getting comfortable. Oh, You're getting... man. I'm only watching this because of Robert Longstreet. So I go, where was Robert Longstreet? Because <laughs> on this this episode, one of the Supernatural boys is on it. Oh? Uh, he's playing Jen's new suitor, uh -huh. which... You know, you said jumping into these cold is very difficult. Uh -huh. Apparently on the previous episode, Pacey had beat him up. Oh. <laughs> she says, you remember that guy you, you you put his face through the wall? What? He's my date tonight at your party. So don't be a dick. He's coming to Pacey's party after Pacey beat his ass? Well, we see him. He doesn't look like he had his face dr driven through a wall. What did he do to get beat up? At a club, I guess. Because... Pacey's pretty successful and he's got money now and a goatee. I don't know if I mentioned that. I saw that goatee. He's living with Jack and a British lady who's a punk musician. Imagine the psychiatrist from the last episode as you know her. Well, I, you know, I did watch five minutes of this. But did you see this lady? I think with I the did. Pink? 
I don't know. I think maybe. She's British. So, all right. So it opens up. They're in Best Buy. He's buying a bunch of stuff. And Joey's like, oh, man. He goes, I hope this money doesn't change me any more than it already has. And she's like, oh, you're so sweet. Don't worry about it. And he goes, okay, well, I'm having a party. You coming by? And she's like, yeah, of course I'll be there. I do everything for everybody. She's getting on that thing. And Jen stops by while they're installing the TV and such. Again, I'm like, ah, uh, that we don't quite see a lot of that guy's face. This is before I stopped it, paused it to double check. <laughs> like this, again, there's no way he's not going to have a speaking role here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And we're gearing up for a party. You know, he will be older than everybody there. <laughs> but it's not outside of the realm of possibility that he will be at this party. Again, I don't know what he is. Supernatural shows up. He doesn't look like he's been beat up. There's really no interaction between him and Pacey at all. No awkwardness. So you're kind of like, man, that's a boy. That's a beat that seems like I need to kind of see that. I'm not going to, though. Joey decides that she's sick of being responsible. Everybody she dates, she gives advice to, and then they leave her to go better their lives. Apparently, it just happened. So she's like, I'm going to drink tonight. I'm going to get drunk. And he goes, okay, you know. And uh, they live with the British girl who's in a band who just sprung on them that she's getting married to a real dirtball. I almost want to say he's the one of the horsemen from Cabin in the Woods, but not it's not Rupert Grint, so it can't be. No. He's a like, Rupert Grint type. There's only four, yeah. And he's a real, he's burping. Urgh, fake burping, you know, because he's a real slime ball. So when she announces that she's marrying him, they show Jack and he looks a little concerned, but I know he's gay. But then they show Pacey and he also looks a little concerned, but more sort of, it seems like, oh, I, I like her. So I'm like, oh, what's going on there? You know, she's marrying him because she needs to get a green card because her visa is expired and she doesn't love him is why she's marrying him. But he's thinking like, well, I'm going to get some free sex. I'm going to live here with y'all, you know, and they're like, what? And so the whole time through the party, Jack is getting more and more disgruntled by this development. He doesn't like the guy. He seems to like her, but again, he's, he's a homosexual. Yeah, it was a real big plot point. So I'm thinking, man, I mean, I get it if he loves her as a friend, but at the same time, it feels like something else is going on here. Remember when Jack discovered he was gay as he read the poem about his male mm-hmm. friend in class? Mm-hmm. Boy, when that's... Because didn't him and Michelle hook up? I think that was the angle, right? Yeah. Those two were dating, and then he's like, oh, fuck, I miss Kevin, or mm-hmm. whoever it was. Yep, he reached down into the front of his panties and pulled his finger out, and he had blood on him, because he's going through his period. Because gay people are women? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that's in reference to, but that's from a movie that I just had a flashback to. She goes, why is she putting her hands in her underwear? To feel it. To feel... Oh, why am I feels- feels wet in there i'm gonna put my fingers in the in the goo yeah what was that there's nothing good in the i don't know what that was needless to say she wasn't clean down there (laughs) so the party's a rager kitty holmes is drunk she's spilling the beans around the party to different people jelly beans it turns out supernatural's a recovering alcoholic Uh uh-oh and Pacey didn't know that, of course, because nobody told him, and he gave him a drink because he's oh, at a party, and he no. wants to be a nice guy. But the guy, so Jen's like, you've been drinking? And he goes, damn, you know. Jen's upon him about Yeah, because she knows say- he's a drunk. And Pacey told her that he gave him a drink, and now she's like, oh, no. Oh, because she's an AA because she has a drug problem and a sex problem. Oh, is she? Jen? We just talked about this. That was like her whole thing when she first came on the show. Right. She had a that. sordid past as a completely regular teenager. Because Dawson's storyline, which we haven't even touched on, is he's visiting Busy Phillips in rehab. Oh, really? She's in rehab. For what? Drinking. Huh. I think she did something and it got out of hand. Man, I almost died so many times drinking. Uh-huh. And nobody sent me to rehab. I know, right? And. So th- we'll, we'll touch on that because it's a completely separate story. But So he's not drinking. He's just holding the drink. He just wanted to be nice and accept the drink from the host. And they have sex. Who? Jen and Supernatural in Pacey's bed. Okay. On top of other people's coats. Oh. He's, we, next time we see him, he's fishing for his underwear. Oh. So he's completely nude. She's visibly still wearing the scarf turtleneck ensemble that she was wearing. Oh, man, I wanted her to just have a scarf on. It, it's weird. And, and then they go, oh, man, can we just be like this? And he goes, yeah, girl, but we should probably get out of this bed. That's so fucked up. Why would you fuck on their coats? Why would you fucking? That's so infuriating because earlier in the party, we see Katie Holmes on the edge of the bed with Pacey. And she's like drunk talking about, I know you still have feelings for me or whatever. And there's just some guy in the back 
casually leaning against the wall, touching a lady's arm. In the room where they're having this conversation? Yeah, it's a bedroom. It's like people are just, I mean, like maybe this, this is just me, but bedrooms are off limits at parties. Yeah, I mean, right? they, they could be a coat room. Exactly. A lot, a lot of times people but do you just don't toss just them in there. But you don't just go casually hang out in no. somebody's bedroom. You maybe it, get permission to go fuck. No, but. you don't get, <laughs> it, like in what, high school? Yeah. You can go fuck in my mom and dad's room. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But this, and it feels like, but the thing is, is it feels like it's an open loft. There's old brick, sandstone, wood. It's, it, it feels like they're in an old like train depot or something, you know, could, to bring it back. Be, could be sex toys in there. Could be hypodermic needles for yeah. intravenous drug use. Well, so it feels like there's no front door or wall almost because we see this fucking room from multiple angles. But then when they're in there having, after having sex on people's coats, people are knocking on the door. Did he have big dick? He must have. No, it's, it's WB. Yeah. We don't know. BDE? Big, big dick, dick energy? energy? Yeah. Mm. And so the, they go, well, okay, we can be together now. What's all this shit on my coat? <laughs> what is this stuff? Well, and he goes, because she's gripping a coat over her, and he goes, you, you, you should probably leave that, though. And she goes, actually, this is Joey's coat. And she has plenty of coats, so I'm just going to take this one. Really? Yeah. It's a real bitch move. Like, you came fully clothed. Leave fully clothed. And stop rubbing your sex on Joey's coat. Of she, all people. Is she naked wearing the coat? No, that's just it. Because oh. we see her earlier with what I thought was a scarf, but it's the exact same color and pattern as the sleeveless sweater she's wearing. So I think it's like a turtleneck, but it like has breaks in it. You know, I'm, I'm picturing Michelle Williams naked in a, in a big, big coat. She also has really short pixie hair in this season. So we can visibly see the choker. So it's not, she's not, she's got to at least have the top on. But she's doing it in a way like she's hiding her nude body. I don't know. We're hung up on this. But so Jack basically one the guy goes dirty one step too far and she's like, I'm not marrying you. Get out. And Jack goes, You need a green car though. And she's like, Yeah, well, what are you gonna do? And he goes, I'll marry you. We should get married. And she goes, Nah. He goes, Nah, it's perfectly fine. She goes, No, look, I don't I care about you, so I don't wanna just be using you for this appreciate it or whatever but it's like i'm i'm gay i don't give a fuck and when i told callie i'm like yes there's that they also really know they know each other really well and they seem to be good friends so you can lie to the authorities really well and get that green card no so you because you will have to cohabitate which they already are yeah but having this sort of um relationship prior to that would make it just no big deal it's just another tuesday uh-huh right i mean you're living there anyways you're not expecting any sexuality you don't care if each other have relationships outside of the marriage. And you know each other and you're friends. It seems like a win-win situation. Yes. He gets to save you and you get to be married in America. So this whole time, and I split this up for a reason. Dawson goes to visit Busy Phillips because she's in rehab. Uh-huh. It's a, an enormous facility. It is feels it, like... Is it Hazelden? If, well, it feels like a resort or a really big hotel. And... She is recovering from something. I think they dated briefly. I can believe that, yeah. Uh, uh, the characters. And so she's like, well, fuck, man. You know, I've been in here. Nobody wants to visit me. And you came and you didn't bring me magazines and whatever. So he notices a lady who we've seen before. Is it Meredith Monroe? It might be because I don't know who that is. But she's playing a big time Hollywood producer who has a couple of years been removed from the scene parker posey he just busted through that bag no i wish Oof. and she is now in rehab and he goes oh man i would love to meet her because his career is stalling yeah because he's like yeah okay whatever he was working on is going direct to video really mm -hmm. her character's name is tony stark really i am iron man yes shut the fuck up yes t-o-n-i stark as soon as he says it i'm like what Kevin Williams isn't, isn't writing this anymore, huh? Yeah, no. And Kevin Smith is writing it. And so they go around stalking her because he doesn't want to just approach her. I'm going to drink this whole six pack today. I'm going to drink this while I'm driving. And she goes, he goes to meet her. And Busy Phillips is like sitting on the patio ground behind him, like pretending like she's hiding, but she's visible this is so inappropriate she's in rehab well and she goes so are we going back to my room or what <coughs> wait what when yeah. dawson comes up to the producer mm -hmm. lady yep she goes you're in here i'm in here i'm bored i haven't had sex you're good looking fucking awesome does dawson dick it down no god. he goes oh tony i like your work i'm, I'm a aspiring <laughs> oh my you god you come over here with that man meat and 
She's like, whatever, walks off. Yeah. So they're following her, and she goes into a group AA, and they walk in, and they go, oh. And the guy goes, oh, no, sit down. And, she, and Dawson's like, oh, no, we're not. And she goes, yes. Busy. He's not supposed to participate in this stuff. He's a visitor. Busy. And when Busy pulls him in, and she's doing a southern accent. This shit's private. Saying that they're co- cousins who are married with kids, and that she kept driving the car through the house. It's incredibly inappropriate. Yeah. It, because, you A, you're wasting everybody's time. B, your story is stupid. For a laugh. Right. And so the lady goes, this is bullshit. He's a dumb fuck. She's a whatever. And he goes, that's true. I just, I, I wanted to get my script or whatever in front of her. And the guy's like, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Absolutely. And not only that, Busy Phillips, you're on dish duty, he says. Nice. Real nice. She should be. And so here's the weird and thing. Dawson, you, you go fuck her, okay? She wanted you to fuck her. You tried to give her a script. Go do your job. The whole time we see this happening when they're outside, it's daytime, okay? Time may have progressed, but not hours, because this is happening at the same time as the party now, which clearly is at night. So you're like, where are they that it's nighttime where everybody else is, but it's daytime over here? (laughs) And if it's progressed from daytime into nighttime, and so the hours match, it can't be that late because he couldn't be there. They'd kick them out because they're closed. But why would they, all of these people be partying at like 6 p.m.? Can you imagine if somebody like threw a party at like 2 p.m.? That seems like some fucking bad shit would be happening at about 8 p.m. It, and it does. <laughs> <laughs> it absolutely does. And so in here, oh, so the dumb kid, he, the, the guy that she's marrying, he's climbing on the TV and it falls and breaks. Uh, I thought you were going to say he fell into it. Oh, I he's wanted trapped to s- in there. Yeah, he's in remote control now. You go, I wanted to see how much weight it could hold, man. And Pacey's just like, if you do not get out of here, I'm going to murder you. <laughs> so Dawson and Busy, she goes, yeah, you know, that whole AA thing was crazy. But I did mean some of the more tender things that I said. You know, I'm sorry that I had to, you had to be there when I hit rock bottom or whatever. And. You know, you were, you did mean something to me. And what the fuck did she do at rock bottom? But if you like to see me smoke some meth with a small limp dick, it doesn't get hard any other way. And watch it get harder and harder. The more I smoke, the harder my dick gets. It's unbelievable. So, again, this whole time, I'm really expecting Robert Longstreet to show up. Yeah. And he doesn't. Oh, he's, he must be showing up soon. He's not in this episode at all. Maybe he's coming. T- get the tv because he's the best buy employee so at this point i'm thinking okay what what was he because if he's just party goer i don't want to have to so i look up and i'm like best buy employee well they were at best buy in the first 45 seconds i'm pretty sure uh, let me go to the end of the episode again no they don't come to pick up the tv or give them a new one (laughs) so i go back and i'm watching it I'm like, okay, there's a brown-haired guy. That's not him. Again, there's no lines. There's another brown... Oh, no, that's not him. There's a blonde lady. Where? Where is he? Oh, you mentioned the, 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 the delivery guys. Yeah. Fast forward a few seconds. No, that's not... He's... No. No. None of these guys are him. What is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> and then I look again, and it goes, it goes, Best Buy employee uncredited. So I'm thinking, okay, there must have been a scene where... Because they go, I'm going to go get the best buy guy to buy this TV. There must have been a scene where he comes over and they do some business. Yeah. And they cut it. Either they just needed to get through this scene, you know, whatever the reason was. And so he's just has a credit, but he's uncredited because he's not in it. If he had been, they would have had to have credited him. That's the only thing I could think of. I think you're right. This is pretty amazing because you, you watched the whole thing. I did. And, I was- and then I went back and watched it on scrub mode. I, I was about five minutes into it. I got to the point where they were bringing the TV over, and you're like, he's not in here. Yeah. I, I turned that shit right off. Yeah. <laughs> I was not going to sit through another episode. It's an, an unfortunate turn of events. It's the first time it's happened to us. You were thinking about suing IMDb. Thinking about? You already you got the wheels turning? Yeah, I called up Stephen P. New. They owe you. Law Associates, and uh, he's on the case. Is that is that Longstreet's name in the show? No, it's an actual law firm, and I'm going to drop their jingle right here. If you don't know what to do, there's always someone you can sue. Get even with Steven. Any problem, big or small, he's the man that you can call. He'll sue their ass and beat them all in the ring or with the law. Call Stephen New. If you want to sue, you know what to do. When 
you listen back, you're going to like it. What um, What do you rate this episode? This episode? Oh, boy. Honestly, it's better than the other one. Okay, I was wondering. Hey, because all of the characters are in it? Camarino's not in it. No, he is not, unfortunately. The only guest star is Supernatural, and I don't. I never watched that show. You know their names are Gabe and Jules, right? Is that right? No, you're no. the one. You're <laughs> fucking... How's it going? I'm getting my hopes up. <laughs> you would start watching it tonight if that was it. Secretly. <laughs> I'd send it to Gabe. Hey, watch. Wait, watch this. <laughs> Wait for it. Uh, so this episode is far more enjoyable because it's got everybody in it, and it, it's just a more upbeat episode. Where's Joey's drunk. Meredith Monroe. I don't know. I'd give this episode a five. The last one you give a four? A three. <laughs> God damn. All right. Cool. What do you give Robert Longstreet? <laughs> a zero. Ten. Nope. You're not giving him a ten? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you sent me that text. You said, <laughs> is he even in movies? Uh-huh. And then I, I sent you his IMDb. Yeah. It's proof. Yeah, yeah. Because we're going to watch Ball of Wax. He sent me his IMDb of movies that we already watched. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to we're gonna watch Ball of Wax next week. Good Lord. He's a voice. And probably not even the prominent one. What is the deal with this? I am so upset. <laughs> <laughs> You're upset about Ball of Wax? I'm or? upset about watching a movie for a guy and he can't even bother to be in the shit. I mean, it's he's it's part of that whole is it owner, a documentary? owner Turkle, that little crew they have, where these these guys all seem to be feeding into each other's things. Mm. I think the ball of wax guy is part of. I mean, that what area. is voice of police officer even going to be on the phone? I don't know. Hello, it's the police. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Longstreet, are you listening? Do you see what we're going through for you, man? Mm-hmm. You don't know us. We don't know you. Nope. Don't uh, want to. You can catch us on uh, social media. We doing filmographies. Discord. Pornhub. Mm-hmm. Only fans. The Ku Klux Klan Weekly Seminal. Yeah. We're big on there. Mm-hmm. They like us. They do. It's very odd. White is right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Crack don't black. Wait. So yeah, YouTube, Reddit, yeah. Facebook, yep. Instagram. We do Or like I said, social media. Yeah, okay. Uh, we on Twitter. Do filmographies. You can Gmail us. Call us. Uh, seven six three six three four one eight nine seven. Yep. Is that it? It better be seven six three six three four one eight nine seven. Holy fuck! It took so long for that number to stick in my head. <laughs> wow! Call that number and wish me a congratulations. Yeah. Tell me to get a job. I remember. Email us at uh, we doing filmographies at gmail dot com. Yep. We'll be back next week with, with long ball. Ball shot. Ball of wax. Ball of wax. Featuring Robert Longstreet as voice. Cop voice. Yeah. Well, I've been Jason. And I've been Jules. And we brown noise. We Doing Filmographies is proud to be a part of the Now Playing Network. Find other great podcasts at nowplayingnetwork.net.